In the beginning of this school year, Milwaukee Public Schools started a new plan to target one of the most segregated areas of the city with the highest incarceration rate of black men in the entire country, the 53206 neighborhood. 95% of students who attend these schools are black. 93% live below poverty. That clip was TMJ4 News Channel covering one of the most segregated neighborhoods in the country, located in Milwaukee. This clip made me question, why are Milwaukee schools so segregated still today as it was back in the 1950s? To figure that out, we need to go back in time. The Brown v. Board of Education court case determined that segregating schools by law was not allowed. This forced Milwaukee public schools to try to integrate, but wasn't very effective due to white citizens threatening to move out of the city. James Nelson's book, Educating Milwaukee, How One City's History of Segregation and Trouble Shaped Its Schools, he mentioned school officials thought of making magnet schools, which offered specialized curricula designed to attract students from all parts of the school district, hoping to racially integrate voluntarily. A lot of students of both races wanted to attend schools closest to them rather than the magnet schools implemented, causing school administrators to force African Americans to choose primarily white schools on the south side of Milwaukee. Nelson wrote in his book that the magnet plan was not well received by many due to the hostility and violence the African Americans faced while attending these schools in the south. By the practice of redlining is one of the many factors that led to Milwaukee labeled the most segregated city in America. Homes like this are for sale in the Sherman Park neighborhood. And based on the statistics, a white family is more likely to buy this house than a black one. Nearly 100-year-old discriminatory lending practices called redlining are influencing that today. When people purchase homes, that's building generational wealth. Reggie Jackson is a Milwaukee historian who grew up in the city. He says in the 1930s, lenders gauged the risk level of home loans. The red areas were deemed most risky and were almost always black communities. What that did is if you lived in one of those red areas, it was practically impossible to get a loan to purchase a home or a business. It may have happened 90 years ago, but is still being felt now. Milwaukee was named the worst city for African Americans last year by 24-7 Wall Street, and home ownership played a big role in that label. According to the census, nearly 41% of Milwaukee's population is black, but less than a quarter of homes in the city are owned by black Milwaukeeans. As said in the clip by a TMJ4 News coverage, redlining also played a major part of segregating Milwaukee. Redlining caused the remaining white citizens to be concentrated in the more wealthy side of Milwaukee and the people of color to remain in impoverished neighborhoods. This has led to generational wealth for the wealthy neighborhoods and generational poverty in the impoverished. So how does the past make the present Milwaukee so segregated? Michael Bonds writes about how equal education opportunity for African Americans has yet been realized in the article, African Americans Continuing Struggle for Quality Education in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, mentioning how African Americans' education system has inferior resources and facilities Bonds emphasizes that the legal battles forcing Milwaukee schools to integrate caused more segregation due to white resistance and white flight, making Milwaukee public schools majority minority school systems. Bonds mentions a court case called Board of School Directors of school City of Milwaukee v. Thompson in 1984, which sought relief to segregated and under-resourced schools by suing suburban school districts. Bonds argues that the actions have not been effective, stating charter schools have not increased student learning in Milwaukee, and legislative language and funding schemes of these reforms divert resources away from Milwaukee public schools. Ultimately, the main reason Milwaukee schools are so segregated is because many white citizens did end up moving to the suburbs, segregating Milwaukee as a whole. There was another reason citizens chose to move out of Milwaukee. According to Nathan Zolik, a senior advisor at the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin, city officials of Milwaukee sought to expand the boundaries of Milwaukee through annexation in a collectivist campaign. The citizens disagreed and moved out of Milwaukee, escaping the government and high taxes. Zolik explains that this caused Milwaukee to become 
polarized in terms of both wealth and race, in which white citizens and financial resources were located in the suburbs, while African Americans and poverty remained in Milwaukee.